Johnny, you should just do it like um, you've never seen videos of Drake in the booth with the phone. Just do it oh, like yeah. you could just do the fan questions yeah. like Drake in the yeah, booth. Just like, be like, um, Stephanie from Texas wants to know. Uh, <laughs> that is, you know, cats or dogs. What's your? <laughs> Airport buys breakfast. Buys breakfast. Day one, day one. Oh shit. Mike, introduce. Yeah. Introduce. Listen. Because I'm gonna cry. Listen. <laughs> we got that guy right here. Listen. You know, last season I kind of did him dirty and called him the, you know, the the global ghost, international snitching or whatever. But we got the guy Mecca, aka well Daniel Sinjada, aka Mecca, aka Mecca. We got Daniel. It's in this great. Clap, you we, got... <laughs> we are I'm great for his presence. <laughs> we got Daniel in this mother. Man, it's the crew is here guys. with the boy, man. Yeah, man, this is crazy. I'm so happy to have you because honestly, we. Didn't did we, did we not have one scene together, season two? No, we did not. But I think no. we yeah, were did not work. so We were close. technically in a driving sequence together, but we were in separate cars. <laughs> right, so, right. So, I mean, that right. doesn't really count. Right. We had never, like, ever even came, I think, not even for table reads or anything. No, no. I mean, you came and said hello to me that right. day. You know, oh, you okay. Came, I had to tell that story. Because yeah. we never have any. I had to tell that story. Okay, you knocked on my trailer. So, mm -hmm. I am a massive Rescue Me fan. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite shows. Such a good show. Oh, um, so, when I heard you were coming out, on Ghost this, uh, yeah. for season two, I was like, oh my God, no way. Like, I gotta go meet him. <laughs> so now he definitely told me that. He's like, yo, bro, he's on the set. Oh, I gotta go meet him. <laughs> Literally right before he went to go. <laughs> so so Mike had went home, and I'm sitting in my trailer with LaToya, yeah. um, who plays Diana Tejada, and I heard your voice walk by in your trailer clothes. And I'm like, oh my God, like, he's, <laughs> he's in the trailer. Like, I'm like, I'm just gonna... Because like, we've been on the show for a while. Like, I I'm gonna go just introduce him, you know, welcome to the family, all this stuff. And I don't know if you were on an important phone call or business call, but so I went and knocked on your trailer and I was like, hey man, I just wanna say like, big fan, like so excited to have you, uh, you know, on the show this season. Like, I love your work. And you're like, oh, thanks man, cool. Cool. And I was like, <laughs> oh, man. yeah, we're excited. And he's like, yeah, cool. I'm like, all right, I'll oh, talk to you no. later. And I went back oh, to the trailer no. to Toya, and I no. was like, it didn't go well. <laughs> in, in my defense, Toya was there. Maybe I was caught off guard by her, because right, she's right. so stunning. Right. Like, I got, got, maybe got tongue-tied. I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't respond to your, um, your thing. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that was the first time we ever met. But um, yeah. we have since become extremely close friends, um, and we talk every day. So, my man, my man. I'm excited to have you. So, yeah, let's kind of go go uh, on your journey and talk about you know where you started to obviously now. Yeah. Um, well, I gotta just jump into getting on your show. That's like, we could go back to like, well, it all began when I was a child. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, I had but, a knack for performing. I had a knack. <laughs> just, you know, I was a people person. Um, no. Uh, it was weird because my, my father had just passed away and I was coming off of like, not the best period of my career, you know, like couch surfing with my sister for a little bit, waiting for something to happen. And uh, when my dad passes away, we had to we had to make a five hour drive to upstate New York in right. order to like clear out, you know, the belongings from his apartment, or I'm sorry, but his house. And uh, while we're up there doing that, these were like three day at a time trips, multiples. And during one of them, uh, my people call me and they're like, yeah, you know, Courtney Kemp and Stars. And I was like, get, get out of here. Not you, do Power Book 2 Ghost. They were like, yeah. <laughs> they were like, you know, she, she heard basically what she told us is that how would Daniel like to play a motherfucker of a role? Mm -hmm. to, you know, transformational, all this kind of stuff. And so uh, I get on the phone with Courtney. Of a role for sure. <laughs> yeah, it was a crazy role. <laughs> that right? offer call is so much better than you have an audition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the offer call is crazy. Right. <laughs> but, then the, but then first the creative conversation with Courtney. Right. Mm. So I was just like, wow, because this kind of stuff wasn't happening for me at that time. Time. And mm. she was like, yeah, Daniel, you know, I was, I thought about you from the beginning. You know, you're the person that I want to play this role. You know, how would you feel about playing it? I was like, uh, first of all, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what downside is there for right. me? Um, but uh, it was momentous for me, man. I had such a good time on your show. To go back a little further, I was a, I was a huge fan of the original Power right. Mothership mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. So I was on this show. I had broken my foot. 
and I'm sitting in a non-weight bearing cast on my couch for like eight weeks. And I'm just looking on Apple how, TV. How did you break your foot? Uh, I, was run, we were, I was shooting a scene where I was running through the forest and what happened was I wasn't paying it. There was a little rock that was sticking out of the ground and my foot just landed at an awkward angle and I felt it go, I was like. So you broke, broke it on set? I broke it on set. What were you shooting? Uh, it was where? This was in South Florida, it was Graceland. No, oh, right, right, right. And we had, to take a, we had to take a hiatus. I had to show up to set on the crutches. They have to come out and say, can you work? You have to say no. Then they say, okay, we're officially shut down Damn. and the crew no Damn. longer has it. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're just on break and I felt terrible because of that but um i'm sitting there watching like world cup stuff i'm bored and i come across this uh i come across a face that i recognize which was omari's mm. so back in the day when i was living in la previously omari used to bump into me at random i would we bump into each other at like restaurants clubs and he would always come up to me and be like daniel and i was like how do you even know my name <laughs> you know what i'm saying like yeah. you know and i just remember him from that and when i was like he was always a good dude and so man you know to cheer to cheer, you know, the fact that this is happening for him, I was like, man, damn, let me check out the show. And as soon as it started, this is a big risk. I was like, oh, this shit looks so sexy. And then it's so gangster. And I was like, oh my God, I wish I could be on a show like that. Mm. Fast forward three years, four years, maybe even five. And, you know, no, more than that. Six, mm -hmm. seven, eight, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm an actor, that's why I suck at math. <laughs> yeah, to get this call was just kind of mind blowing, man. And it was also one of the first times in my career that I was ever cast as a black man right. specifically mm -hmm. right. and i can't tell you how much that 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 me i went to fam you i'm mm -hmm. like i'm black right. and they're like you know right. and i'm neither not black enough or i'm not white enough and so i end up being like this ambiguously you know whatever race ethnically ambiguous character you know character time and time again but with this it was mecca and I was just like, man, now when I go to certain neighborhoods, I get love. Right. Before, right. I usually, <laughs> I side, I side note on, on this thing, we could cut this if if you don't want this in here, but what? my friend Nina Parker, she's an uh, Entertainment Tonight host. She was at dinner like a couple nights ago, and she said, it was a table you would like a couple white people, and she heard the N word come from the table. <laughs> and she turned around, and she said, Hold on. And you turned around and looked at her and said, I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. She I know the me. exact table, so this is what's happening. Yeah. Bro. She texted so, me because I posted that be real of us at the at the party at the house on Saturday. Yes, 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 yes. So what, 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 the, this is the this is the context of that particular moment. I remember this moment exactly. So I'm sitting there, we're talking about it's a table full of friends, and we're talking about why you know uh, white racial slurs do not compare right his, in terms of the historical relevance to the n-word right and uh in the context of the conversation i think i used both words and i remember as soon as the n-word came out i saw this sister turn like this <laughs> i was like no no no, 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 no. Yeah, i'm glad what we're talking about is why you shouldn't use you know what I mean? but i guess in the context i used the word but i mean you know um yeah that was uh that was a side note of, yes, of what you were saying like yeah a lot of people are like you know you don't get cast as a black man a lot of times yeah ethnically no. and Ambiguous. I think um, in the beginning of my career, I played Langston Hughes in a independent film uh, called Brother to Brother. Mm -hmm. Anthony Mackey was in that. That was at the start of his career, start of both of our careers, and that probably is the only time. Uh, That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, it's always it's always been like, you know, even for Graceland, the show where I broke my foot, they mm -hmm. were imagining it like a guy like you, like or like a not you. I would think like a, <laughs> a, no, I like a like a Matt McConaughey esque plays drums on the beach, right. wild hair, you know, dude, white man surfer, right. white guy surfer, and uh, my people were like, what about Daniel Sanjata? And they were like, no, and then it, what, at, we're gonna have to see him do it. Right. So, but the first thing was a test, and I went in there and I. I was stealing stuff from Denzel in Training Day. You know, How many seasons did that go? Uh, only three. It, it's crazy because so many of the fan questions were about Graceland on the oh, Who wow. Has It podcast. Oh, that's crazy. And we were at dinner the other night, and two people came up to me and were like, oh, we, I love Graceland. I can't yeah. believe that guy canceled. So yeah. that show had a lot of love. I don't know why it didn't keep going. Yeah, I don't understand it, man. I mean, I'm a, I'm a one-trick pony. I want to get like you guys. Like, I don't understand the producing aspect of the business that I'm in. I'm just an actor. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so like, there are, there are decisions that come down from conflicts between studios and networks. Right. I believe it had something to do with NBC Universal and Fox, and I don't know which was the parent umbrella company, right, but right. they wanted everything under their umbrella to be uniform. Yeah. If it was Fox, they wanted everything Fox. If it was NBC Universal, I think they wanted NBC Universal and, no, and we got yeah, it's kind of, we got the gas complex. Of that. It's kind of what's happening with HBO Max right now. A lot of they're canceling like most of their shows. Really, and some of these shows are hit shows. But oh man, they, they don't want to put any more money into it. Yeah, There's... it's a really complex business. But to go back, like. You were on a show for, how long was Rescue Me? Nine seasons? Eight seven. Seasons? Seven seasons. And then you yeah. were on Graceland for three seasons. Yep. 
And then you just said you were couch surfing and you were and you were looking for like people don't understand. They think you're on a show for seven, eight years, and they go, they're hundred millionaire, they're celebrities, they're this and that. Like, no. no, we're actors just looking for the next job to, you know, be able to continue to, to we do unemployed, we unemployed until we get until we get to the next no, role. No, you're like. totally unemployed. <laughs> when you're not working, right. you're, you're not just yeah, you're not you, unless you're a working actor, you are not an yeah. actor. Right. Yeah, I mean literally. you kind of are, but right. you're not really. Until you're working. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, fact. people think it's a it's we it is weird how that works. I think it's partially a factor of the nature of the culture of celebrity. It's meant to magnify you know, a, a, a certain perception right. of people to the point where, you know, they, they were to wonder, you know, what's what's it really like? They would think that we're all millionaires right. and mm -hmm. we don't have any problems. Right. But I, I go, my mind goes to Lisa Left Eye Lopez on VH1 when she was like, let me tell you how a multi-platinum selling hip hop artist can be broke. Right. And she mm -hmm. breaks it down how TLC was basically making like yeah. $80,000 to, you know, when they divided all the money and the recoupable expenses. Naturi and stuff. too. Naturi came mm -hmm. on and was That's talking correct. about that, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. That's correct. Because she was on, um, uh, Three, what is it? Three, 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 yeah, three LW. Oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. She, 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 it was a, it was a, a um, it was a group. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. oh I and thought it was a show. You know, and she, yeah, she was talking about how like I was, she was broke after. Mm -hmm. after it's like crazy mm -hmm. how people don't really understand how that works. Well, I mean, how that translates to. Uh, to us, and I don't know if you, if you guys have broken this down before, it's like, you know, when you hear Denzel Washington gets $20 million for a film, mm -hmm. he's taking home 7.5. Right. So that means if a person's making making $100,000, what they're really bringing home is like $40,000, right. $45,000. But it's still $40,000. Right. Manager, manager, manager right. taxes. Right. Oh, and this was one of the reasons why, if you guys thought Omari was bullshitting in terms of like he, he needed a little help in order to continue doing power, I think, mm -hmm. and then it, this yeah, is public yeah. knowledge, right? Yeah, 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 and, yeah. Uh, and 50 like broke him off right. so that he, you know, because he, but he's making $150,000 an episode. No, right. he's not. Right. And then yeah. you got to think about, did he have kids? Right. I don't know, but I mean, like he's pr probably had to take care of people and yes, bro. man, bro, really? it gets tight. Yeah, and, and then pe people also don't realize that like there's a lot to pay for to keep up stuff. Mm -hmm. Like yes. you got to, when you go to premieres and events, like the clothing, is expensive. You gotta mm -hmm. get a stylist. You gotta get makeup. A lot of times, the studio is not paying for that. So, right. it's a it's, people don't realize it's like how that yeah. glitter ain't gold, man. Right. Yeah, it's kind of a thing. It's kind of a thing. Right. So, I mean, we all can't be Michael Rainey. Jr. <laughs> <laughs> we been doing be it since he yeah. left the room. I, I love saying that. I love saying that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was your like big first like big first break that you got? Take me out. Take, yeah, take it, it was, that a, was, on, was on Broadway. Yeah, that was a, a Broadway play. Right. We did the play for two years, but the, what it, it was weird, man. So, like, I had a small recurring role on Law & Order SVU. Nice. Mm. Where I was, like, every three episodes, I did, like, a drive-by scene as, like, the lab tech guy who didn't even have a name. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it was just, you just see me occasionally. That was paying the rent. Then I booked one episode of Sex in the City. And around that time, I can't remember the order of operations, just one episode, but it was like the season premiere of the fourth season. Right. So it was like right after 9-11 and the show had just caught in like, you know, it had just become like a major sensation because Sex and the City took a little while to catch on. Mm -hmm. But uh, somewhere in there, I get Take Me Out and it's the fact that people see you a little bit here and they see you a little bit there and then like, oh, the guy's, you know, he's off Broadway, started off Broadway, then oh, now he's on Broadway. And it creates like, I won't say a feeding frenzy, but it, it creates a perception right. that mm -hmm. the person is everywhere. And uh, in the context of the industry, they say work begets work. And so then from from there, shit started. How was Broadway? What was that like? Um, it was crazy, man, because, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with the show, but it's about a baseball player who comes out of the closet. And it's the kind of guy that you would be like a Barry Bonds or, I don't know, like somebody that you would just never, ever think. And he's like, yeah, um, I like men. I'm gay. And let's just keep it pushing. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, I'm sorry, the, the context that I, I forgot about your, what your question was. Uh, wh like, how was it on Broadway? Like, oh, yeah, so, like? uh, in the, <laughs> so in the context of that... Uh, we Very had, baseline question! Baby, <laughs> come on, focus, <laughs> focus. We should do a Rogan and spark one up. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it, it, we had to be naked. So there was, you know, there was nudity on stage, and that was... I, like, I was looking at the context of the play, and I was like, this is such a well-written play. It like it, it it it's the kind of play that you had to rise to the level of the writing, not take bad writing and make it good. Right. And so I was like, wow, this would be something. This would be a challenge. And then I was I saw that nudity and I was like, damn, right. full frontal nudity. Your 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 piece was out, dude. For for. For twelve hundred people per show, eight times oh a week. Oh my god! My yeah, sh my shit is not big enough. To yeah, do that. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Yeah, not big you know, to do that. there were dudes that were fluffing. <laughs> there were dudes that did fluff. <laughs> yeah, they did. They did. I fucking just, be backstage yeah. like, all right, come on, man. Yeah, come, come on, on come on, daddy. <laughs> yeah, so did you grow like, for me? Just a little bit. <laughs> did you have like comps and have people come and watch you and like your 
all that stuff. Like, yeah. you had family coming. All that. Yeah, there were some members of my family that, like, my daughter was not going to see that. Yeah, right, right, like, right. That I was not going to have her. Actually, she came to the show, but I had her escorted out every time there was going to be nudity on stage. Oh, okay, all right. Because she was, she was too. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, that was my, I would say that was my big break because that, like, you know, a lot of things started rolling after that. Rescue Me came after that. Yeah. You know so I'm what saying? was that audition process like? Like, because Dennis Leary, notoriously yeah. wild man. Yeah. I, I want to hear, like, what's, what happened in the room? How did you get the call? Like, all that stuff. It's a short story, really. I mean, it was, it, the audition came as most auditions do. Your agent calls and says, hey, you know, got a script. We want you to read for interest. You know, pending your, you know, pending interest, you can go on tape Wednesday at two o'clock, whatever. So I'm reading this. Uh, it's Rescue Me, obviously. Role of Franco Rivera. I prepare my stuff. I make all my choices, psychological gestures in the mirror and stuff. Yeah. Was well, it a black character or it was? No, he's Puerto Rican. He okay. was he was New Yorican. So right. technically, if you want to go far enough back. Right. I yes. just didn't know if it started as a black character and then it became Puerto Rican. Nope. Yeah. Nope. 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 No, he was always Puerto Rican from the start. I was glad there was no Spanish requirement. He was New Yorican, right. so like you know, he's like New York kind of guy. Right. And uh, yeah, man, I went in there and I blew it. I blew it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just was Dennis in the room? Yes, uh. him and Peter Tolan were both in the room. Peter Tolan, Larry Sandler show, multiple Emmy winning, you know, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I sucked and I stank up the room and I, I, I was watching myself melt down. The lights got real hot. <laughs> I start sweating and shit. I'm like fidgeting and acting weird. And I leave the room and I was like. That was terrible. So I get in the elevator. On the way down, I call my agent, and this is the only time in my career that I've ever done this. I was like, Mark, you have got to get me back in that room. Right. I said, I fucked that up, and I know who this guy is. I just, I was nervous, and I just need to get back in that room. He got me back in the room. I booked the job. Fast forward to Dennis saying, uh, if you had not come back in that room, you were not getting that job. He said, <laughs> he said, he said, no, your, 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 you know, your self awareness and your intuition was correct. You were terrible. <laughs> he said, but you came back in the room and you, and you know, I did the thing that time. So guys, we're going to take a break from the episode and we're going to talk to you real quick about men's health. Obviously, I'm in the new studio. Michael's not here. I came in today to talk to you about um, our friends at Blue Chew. So did you know that one in 10 men have ED? And one in two men on the crew has it, have it as well. But we're not going to talk about that. It's all about confidence, right? And when it's time, you know, to do the business, sometimes stress, anxiety, or a bad day can affect your performance and ruin the mood, the fun, everything for both of you. And nobody wants that. BlueChew.com is coming to you to the rescue. It's a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at the fraction of the cost. So listen. Blue Chew's tablets help men achieve their full potential. You guys know I like my drive-by ads. Full potential in the bedroom and combat all forms of ED. Because BlueChew.com is an online prescription service. There are no visits to the doctor's office. There are no waiting in line at the pharmacy. You don't got to go in there to get laundry detergent and also a little assistance in the bedroom. You can do that discreetly. And it comes to your door in a discreet package. You know what I mean? The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com and consult with one of their licensed medical providers. They're licensed. It's not just some random guy in a van that's selling you pills. You know what I mean? I've done that before. Bluechew.com, baby. You'll receive your prescription within days. And the best part, online. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength for your prescription. No pun intended. Strength with length. You got it. Don't like swallowing pills? No problem here. Blue Chew's tablets are chewable, or you can just throw it in the protein shake in the morning like I do to get the day going. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA, and they prepare and ship direct, so it's cheaper than a pharmacy. And here's a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free. When you use our promo code CREW at checkout, I don't know why I'm yelling at you like I'm Gary V. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's it. Again, that's bluechew.com. Promo code CREW to receive your first month free and some assistance, baby. Dave, are they putting that, the blue chew in my car? Oh, we're still rolling? All right, bluechew.com, promo code CREW. What am I drunk? <clears throat> Back to the episode. Mike, what, do you have any, like, crazy audition stories where you, like, fucked up or, like, did anything that you remember? Bro, I'll, I haven't, or, like, in-person audition. Well, we all haven't, like, Yeah, that's what I'm years, saying. Like, years, but... I don't even... I remember being really, really young. I don't know what this was for, but it was an audition where I like, I was like, I didn't even want to go. Like, I, for me, and like, I was just like, I'm gonna go anyway, whatever. And like, I kind of had everything off book. You for me, like, I was I, like, I had it. And then once I got there, I, like, we start. I have the first line, and I'm just there, just silent. I'm like. <laughs> 
<laughs> not not because you didn't know it though. You said you had it. Yeah, like I knew I had it, but like I guess in that instant I forgot I had the first line. Oh gotcha. Oh gotcha. <laughs> so I was just there, I was just, just like I just blinked. And then I'm like and then we just reset and then like I we do the audition or whatever, but I feel like I don't, I don't remember how it went, but I, like it was just a weird. Moment. How old were you? Like fifteen or sixteen? Yeah, I was probably like yeah. I was probably like fourteen. Yeah. Probably. For those of you that don't know, the kid has a ridiculous memory. Yeah. <laughs> some of it, I, 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 memorizing lines, like some, I believe, because people ask me, well, how do you guys do it? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that you do get better with d over time. And so, and However, have so you many different processes too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I wondered, what do you do? Right. Because then, you, you know, know what he you does? don't understand. You know what he, he, does? he gets rewrites the day of, the night before, right. monologues, the stuff he has to do in the um in the at the university in right. the classroom. That's you know complicated intellectual right. arguments right. and shit. Eight, but eight spoken eight like casually, words. yeah, dude. Yeah. You want to know what he does? What does he do? He gets a set and he'll have like this much, and then I'll have like a response, and then I'll have like this much, and I'll go, Mike, did you read the scene? He goes, Now, nah, what are we doing today? And he'll look at it and he'll go, All right, we'll we'll hit it on set. He'll literally go like this. Okay, cool. All right, let's do it. And he'll say the whole thing, and my one line is like, okay, bet. And I'm like, fuck, what's my line? What's my line? <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless crazy Gianni memory. Is, if that's not hyperbole to make a point, that means you got a photographic memory, bro. Yeah. yeah and that's, um, that's rare, man. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah I, it's like a photographic memory, memory. And then, like, my thing is, too, like, it's. Like a lot easier for me to memorize it. Like if I read it with someone, like mm -hmm. like I could I could read it myself like five six times. I'll remember it, but like it will still kind of be like a little blurry in my mind. But like mm -hmm. I read it two three times with G, yeah. like it's like this. And obviously I was being funny for for the for the thing. But <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll, but basically, when we get to set, we'll just read to each other. But right. like I need to read it the night before. Uh -huh. I need to you know. But yeah. he's very good at, at it's crazy. Yeah, I like, play mine in headphones. Like I will, ooh. I'll read it, read it, read it. You know what I mean? Then I'll try to do the look down, you know, like read their lines, see if you can repeat it, uh -huh. and then I'll just put it into a voice memo. And and literally while I'm at the gym, when I'm on my way to work, right? You know, and it eventually gets there. Mm -hmm. You know, right. like my like my thing like with the reading like back and forth. I look at like his line as a cue for my next line. So like right. I know what he says. So I'm like, oh, this is what I say. After. Yeah, yeah. So like his lines are like cues for my line. Yeah, that's how that's kind of makes it easier for me. Yeah, it is crazy. It kind of speaks to what you were saying about how everybody kind of has their own process. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, to everything, even when it comes to like memorizing yeah. lines. The good thing about being on set is that if you fuck up, they just go, okay, let's take it back. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're on the show for a while, if you're like a guest star and you're fucking up a lot, they're like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Like, better come prepared. You might get fired. But if yeah. you've been on the show for fucking 10 years, they can give you a couple, you know, mulligans. Yeah. But when you go in for an audition, you gotta have that oh, shit. Oh, yeah, no, no. You do. Because you can't stop. Yeah, oh, you do. You can't stop. It's no. it cuts, it fucks up the whole audition if you're like, wait, hold on, let me go back. I know. They're like, oh shit, we gotta restart. You know what's weird about that though, Gianni? That. I actually did that on my last read. This week you I, did what? You I, stopped and, and yeah, I, yeah. I, I blinked like the 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 like this the second the second scene we did, and I was like, hey, let me just take that back. From yeah, it but felt again, crazy. I was like, you oh, actually could probably right. do that. The, the the you know most actors would probably they, you just have you just lost the job. You just you <laughs> oh, just no, lost man. the job. Son. <laughs> um, you like, know what's weird about that though? You would think the casting directors and producers would be able to they, that they know how it goes on set. That mm -hmm. Gianni, that literally what, what the audience sees as the final product might be a splicing together of two different takes. Right. Mm -hmm. So if if an actor messes up in an audition, just let them rewind and just let them reset right. and because stay in the moment. Maybe even give them line because that's because that's literally the process. That's you're the be work going environment. Right? Yeah, that's the that's the environment you're gonna be in. Hundred percent. Yeah. So right. it's like, damn, the audition conditions are like kind of yeah. kind of tough for us, yeah. bro. Yeah. But, and, and, and as you were saying earlier, though, it's not like that now because most of us are self-taping. Yeah. Self so the advantage so of the yeah, self-tape yeah, yeah. is that you could take four hours to put your audition together. Mm -hmm. If you ask me, the disadvantage is you don't have direction. Right. So mm -hmm. you're guessing at what they want. Right. And oftentimes, and that's and then that, but that that like this where like having like you know your friends around you like that are in the same like profession as you they could come and you know give you input like oh I think you should you know do it like this do it like this yeah obviously they don't know exactly where the writer or director is coming from with every character like exactly what they want out of it but you know like me like G helped me with my reading this week he was like I think maybe yeah. you should play like this play like this and I did exactly that and got some good feedback thank you man. So you guys are saying that you, you do have room in the mansion to do auditions? Yeah, we found I'm really happy about that. I was worried. I was worried. You know what I'm saying? I, we found a small little you, nook and yeah. cranny to get it done. Yeah. They're, uh, they're struggling artists. <laughs> you know what, though? Not to make too much of a left turn, I really respect the hustle. It, Ice Cube, Supreme Hustle, is one of my favorite songs. <laughs> what you guys are doing is like, 
it's, it's setting a bar for like, it's inspirational. It sets a bar for like other people in similar right. positions to do their own version of the same thing. You guys got the merch going, which by the way, I do hope you have an extra large. Yeah, we'll, grab, we'll get you sure. one on the way out. <laughs> I, think we, I think we have some here. We'll get you one yeah, on the way out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now we I do want a piece of merch. Yeah, please cop that merch right now. The crew has it. Dot shop. Do it. Quick little bug here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go do it. Do it. But, nah, but, but like that goes to like what we were saying, like as, act, like, as actors, like we're... Yeah. Gang. Oh, we got, oh yeah, yeah bet, bet, bet. But yeah, like as artists, like as actors, like we're unemployed until we're employed. Like right now, we're on hiatus, so like right. we're not filming, we're not doing shit. So right. mm -hmm. we gotta have we gotta have other shit, you know, to yeah to work on. Yeah, yeah that's, that's like a, a production rolling. company right. and a hit podcast. Right. <laughs> What'd you guys say? It's the number one what podcast? It was the number one TV and film podcast. TV and film podcast. on on Apple Podcasts and and Spotify. Wow. And ninety nine percent of our views are on YouTube. Wow, yeah. wow. So wow, it puts into perspective. Shout out to Money Lion. Right. Y'all <laughs> ain't lying. Y'all ain't lying. Y'all got money. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got money. But here's the thing. Most actors, like, I know there was an article that went viral a couple weeks ago, Sydney Sweeney from Euphoria. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen it? Um, who is Sydney? She's Sydney's a white girl. Um, she, um, she was also... Uh, in Euphoria. I just in, can't, whatever character she is. But yeah, I, know yeah. She, I probably know she is, yeah. So she basically said, um, I, uh, I can't afford to take six months off of work. Yeah. So people took it as, oh, no one can afford to take six months off of work. Obviously, like, you're not special. And what she meant was... I'm on hiatus. I have to book another job to yeah. get paid for six months. That's right. When I'm not filming Euphoria. That's right. But pe as always they do on Twitter, they run with, <laughs> oh, she said that she wants to take six months off to go vacation. No, she needs to get another job right. to keep up with it until Euphoria comes back so she can get paid per episode. Now, and they also were talking about her salary and how much she makes per episode, which we just touched on. Your manager, agent, all this gets 10%. She also has to go to these Met galas and this and that, and right. they're not paying you for this. Right. Maybe she's doing some type of brand deals which helps this and that, but She might be coming out of pocket for her outfit for the Met Gala, which yeah. isn't you can't right. just wear right. Levi's and a T-shirt. <laughs> and, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You wear it like one time, and you outfit. can never wear you can it never again. Wear it again. Yeah, and that shit's time. probably three, four bands. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's why me and Michael were like, listen. You know, God forbid a pandemic happened. God forbid this, that happens. Right. We can always come in this podcast studio, yeah. always talk to artists or just ourselves and mm -hmm. recap old episodes, recap yeah. new episodes, and do what we love and talk about our craft and still make money. We're right. not at the whim of a studio yeah. to say, you can work. This which, which I love about the, um, the, well, the way the industry is changing where it's more in the artist's hands. Now, obviously, like power and stuff like that, like those jobs are at the whim of other people. But now with our TikToks, now with this, now with which follow me on so many lanes. Get a million. Yeah. There's so, get Gianni to a million. Yeah. Exactly. There's so many lanes to like produce your own content and mm -hmm. make your own stuff. The yeah. Vlog. Please subscribe to Where's Twenty Two Channel. Yeah. So that's what I love about that was just one big commercial. <laughs> right. No. But that's what I just love about what we can do now yeah. as as artists and actors. Yeah. Somebody said it in too many syllables. It was like the like the democratization of the media. Right. But like <laughs> but the fact that you can take you can take it into your own hands, put your own thing together. You know, and I don't. I'm. You know, I don't want to sell pipe dreams to anybody. You're not just going to put some podcast together at home, and it's not. It's not going to be this. These guys are like. <laughs> they did. They did it. At the, there was timing. They had. Other, they had other things going on. Mm. But taking. But <laughs> taking the. Taking the time to think about that. To think about the business in that way. Be having the foresight to know that you want more creative control and control over when and how you get your bread. Right. Like you know what I mean. Not just like when they say you could come to set. Right. Uh, that's huge, man. That's yeah. huge. That's huge. I, I, yeah, I, so. I do love it, and obviously, me and Michael are going to be producing and you know doing stuff for a long time that you're going to be leads and stars of hey but, man um, <laughs> i can still i still got it baby <laughs> i still got it oh, but we yeah know. Oh, i just know. i just love the way that the industry is going and, and stuff like that we need to get you on instagram man you need yeah. to get on it you have a finsta well he has a finsta that that i'm on which yeah, we're never gonna that's release it, that's, that. that's the that's on the that's on the qt but me and mike have finsters too they ain't you, never you have you know unfortunately in today's climate you actually have to uh i want to go back to what you said what was her name from twitter about uh, the story you were just telling me about she said she wants she could she she Six months off a year. Yeah, she, What's she her name? said she wanted to take six six months off. Yeah, this is the thing. She's lucky that that's how, that that's what she said. That or got... she didn't want to take six months off. She needed to book another job yeah. during her hiatus. Right, Sorry. right. So wh however you interpret that, it's a relatively innocuous thing. The worst thing that you could say is that she's an entitled like blah right. blah. And she wants more money and more right. time off, mm. and that would be a misinterpretation of what she actually said. Right. If you if you actually take the time to put together what she actually said, it's also it's like it's more understandable. Right. But I'm saying like what's let's say she had said something else. Right. One of the reasons why I don't mess with social media is that you can't just. 
you can't, there's things that you can't say and sometimes you don't know what you can't say. Right. And once you said it, it's, you can't take it it's back. Too late. Mm -hmm. And now your ass is canceled. Right. And I mean, and, but it's happened to a bunch of people recently. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like we're in a good place now where a lot of the initial done, done, done is yeah. kind of over with and it's yeah. more like, but yeah. we are still in, in that in that. You still culture. have, you gotta be, there's gotta be aware of landmines. You right. can't like offend people. You know right. what I mean? It's like, well, and when, censorship we, is since insane when do we have such thin skin? Like, right. you can't hurt my feelings? Really? Censorship is really insane. Yeah, man. Things, bro. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's, 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 it's feelings over facts right now. Yeah. Which, <laughs> however, I would not let, I would not, it is feelings over facts. Right. It really is. Yeah, people are out of that. Yo, that there. is a fact, though. Yeah. That's why the world's so fake, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah, man. So people fake. are out of But I don't know. I just, I agree. Like, sometimes I'll post some, like, my, my, my publicist, Watches my, my, you know, she'll watch my stories she'll and she'll be go shaking every time. What is happening? I'm like, I'm just trying to make people laugh. Like, <laughs> right. I just want to make like I, that's who I am. I'm an entertainer. At like some of the stuff I say with them. Yeah. <laughs> if it ever, if Yao probably records everything and vlogs it, if some of that footage got out, I'd be done. Yeah. But I'm really just trying. Like to... Like me at the restaurant the other night. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> Canceled by my own sister. Like no, 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 no. Yeah. Right. But, but really, right. it does yeah. come from a good place. I'm like, yeah. I'm just trying to make everyone have a good yeah. time. Like I don't want to offend anyone. Mm -hmm. You know, like. I, guess I think I, it comes off that way. There's always, even when you're pretending to be serious, people know better right. than to take what you say too seriously. Mm -hmm. right. um, but the messed up thing, that, to go jump back, piggyback on what we were saying, is that right now we live in a day and an age where somebody just decides that they didn't like what you said, right. and they have a bunch, they have a little cadre of social justice warriors online. Right. They can hurt you. They, they round up the troops. They round up the troops. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I would never let. Yeah, leave me I would alone. never let what everybody. I just. <laughs> What'd you say, Mike? I said, y'all leave me alone. I love everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're not, yeah. Hey, man, that's the best way to be. You feel me? Um, I, I would never let what I just expressed stop me, though. Like, I would want to wait until... I'm number one on a call sheet right. or a series regular on a show that's as popular as yours. Then I would launch the blue check marks if it, if I could ever hope for that. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's let's dive into Echoes on Netflix, which is oh man, which number is one, number one on Netflix right now. <laughs> it's a, it's a limited one. series, though. You guys got an ongoing. I, I would not launch all my social media based on. On echoes. Right. I didn't. I didn't finish it. I watched the first You're two episodes. You're strategic. I like that. Right. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I, like I mean, I would want to wait till I got I like something that. ongoing. Right. I didn't watch the first. But the, number one is first... tough, though. Number one. Number on Netflix one on is Netflix. Tough. On That's Netflix. That's super. And there's a lot of shit on Netflix. Do, do you, I, not to spoil it. Do you die in, in it? Or no, no. No. So it could potentially no. be picked up for another. The black season? man lives through this whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> this Bye. is not this, a 2004. This is not. Yeah. This is not a. Yeah. No. I lived through the whole thing. It's it's Michelle Monaghan who actually plays twins. It's very degree of difficulty in terms of what knowing how we make the donuts solid nine you know what i mean like right. it's hard she's playing two you know two identical twin sisters oh, so, so it's one it's one so it's one it's one actress playing twin oh sisters my God. and the, and the twin sisters a, a short synopsis of the plot is that the twin sisters live across the country and switch between two husbands every six months to a year and think that the husbands don't know and turns out that you know, my character actually does know, and then somebody dies, and it's a it's a thing. So yeah, yeah. it's uh, that yes. sounds mixy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's, um, obviously the sisters have scenes together at some point. Yeah, they do. They green screened it, and they had a stand in a body double for yeah. That. So can you look just like? Can you explain to the the um the listeners yeah. like how they get that done? Because some people are like, wait, they're both there? Yeah, no, I would have. A, I, I hope yeah, I explain it in an easy to understand way because I'm not good with the technology. Um, I just stand on my mark and straight <laughs> over my line. Is this my light? Um. Um, so uh, Michelle would come on set, and we would shoot. We would shoot every scene that both sisters had, were in simultaneously. If they were in any of the same frames, we got to shoot all those frames or all those scenes twice. Right. So we shoot one with her as Lenny and with her as Gina. And when she's Gina, her stand-in plays Lenny. Mm -hmm. And when she's Lenny, her, her stand-in stand plays Gina. Gina. Right. And some of that goes in front of a green screen, and then they'd work the magic in post-production, and it's seamless. You would never know that, is that they're not crazy, literally man. kissing each other or looking each other dead in the eye. It's yeah. the weirdest thing. That's it's crazy. insane what they can do now. And then like, on top of like lines and everything, like remembering lines, mm -hmm. and then, like, they're obviously like two different people, so like they... That that's actually crazy. Yeah, one of them had a southern accent. Yeah, that's whatever. what I'm saying. Like, yeah, that's, they that's speak hard. differently. Like, mm -hmm. damn, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's tough. Um, then it's that's Matt Bomer. Who, Matt Bomer was a star of uh, uh um, not Suits. It's uh, uh white, we, collar. Yeah, white collar. White collar. White yeah. collar. I should know that. I like him. But yeah, I, yeah, he's awesome. He's great. Yeah. And uh, and then me. And so yeah, man, it was it was a good time. What what's your favorite thing you've ever done? Here's the thing. Oh, 
I'm so we're so close with Daniel and each other. This could be a conversation for four hours. Yeah, literally. I'm gonna try and get some power fan questions <laughs> out here and like, because everyone keeps asking. We want they wanted Daniel on the podcast, and but there were specific stuff that they're asking. So I'm gonna say we will get to some power stuff. I just <laughs> love this man more than anything. Oh so, man, I love you guys. Um, too. But yeah, so so what was what was your favorite thing you've ever done? You're you gonna think I'm to saying this just because I'm on your podcast, but it's a, you, you, I would say Power Book Two Ghost mm -hmm. and the character of Mecca is a dead heat between that and Paul Briggs from Graceland. Right. If Graceland would have gone on for six or seven seasons and we all, all the, we were all crushed. The actors on the show, the series regulars were like, oh my God, right. we had a good thing going. If that could have gone on for six and seven seasons, I would probably put that in number, you know, my, my number one spot because that was my show. Right. I mm -hmm. was like, it was me and Aaron's fate were number one and two. Right. Uh, but uh, I'd have to say what happened with power. Man. Yeah. For all the reasons that I said above, plus the dude, it's just the character, Insane. man. As soon as yeah. from the introduction, he's yeah. click, clack, get yeah. back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, he's literally. breaking legs. Yeah. I, I was like, this, oh, smug, really? he, yeah. brother, this <laughs> motherfucker yeah. is a bad dude. Yeah. The bald head. Did, also. You, did you decide that? Courtney said, how do you feel about rocking a baldy? And by the way, can I tell you and your audience members how happy I am that my hair actually grew back? Yeah. For six, <laughs> at my age, man, uh, you, know, it's, it's, uh, you know, six months of shaving your head on a daily basis, mm -hmm. uh, I thought that it might not come back. But it was her idea, and it had the effect, I think, of like people, I had multiple friends and uh, in the industry and also family members just say that when they first saw my character enter the screen, they didn't immediately know that it was me. Yeah. And then they go, oh shit, that's Daniel or yeah. Daniel Sunjata. Yeah. That's the effect I wanted to have. Yeah, Ga so Gabrielle, like Gabrielle Ryan from um, uh, Force, she came to the party on Saturday and she walked in and like I was like introducing everyone and she had a conversation and walked away and um, she's like, who is that? And I was like, that's fucking Mecca from, <laughs> from Ghost. And she's like, no, it wasn't. I was like, <laughs> she's like, I didn't recognize him without the, the, the without bald Without the baldy. Without the baldy. And the just for men and the beard. That right. was all. Uh, uh, I, got the I, legendary sh I should still baldy. be doing that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Gianni, when did you start acting? How old were you? I was, so I moved to LA when I turned 19. I oh. started like doing plays and stuff at around like 16, 17. Okay. But I moved to LA when I was 19 and started auditioning. Almost I just, I wondered, I wondered if you guys had in common the fact that you both grew up in the game, but mm -hmm. that would be more, more so yeah. you, Michael, yeah. right? Yeah, I grew yeah. up in this shit. I was. Yeah, you did. Been doing this for a long time. I feel like an old man every time I think about it, bro. Cause like, bro, when I think about it, bro, it's like, nah, bro. But when you think about it, like to say I've been working for 13, but what is it? What is it? 13 years, maybe? Probably longer. Something like, like that, eight? right? Eight, yeah, yeah, to be work, like, like that's, that shit sounds yeah. crazy, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> it sure. sounds crazy, bro. Working for 10 plus years sounds crazy to me, Man. especially at this and, age. And how old were you when you started? I started when I, 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 so not till I got out of college. Right. So, and that was graduate school. So I got out, I graduated from NYU in 1998. And then I started. Did you do any type of like acting or anything at NYU? Oh yeah. Oh, no, did. so at NYU, you're in class from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then you're in rehearsal for whatever play you're in production for from seven to 11. Damn. So you have no time to take a job. You got no time to barely wash, wash your clothes. I, yeah, I mean, it's I terrible. I hear yeah. that NYU doesn't like when people work. I'm like, what this they, is crazy. They don't like when, um, that's an excellent observation. They don't like it when students that are in the conservatory, the yeah. three-year training program, when they try to carve out space to do independent films, while they're in school. They don't want you working while you're in school. Now, I understand generally where they're coming from. I think it's that they want you so focused on the curriculum right. that you get the absolute most out of it. And, they, and we're trying to teach you, wait, wait, don't start acting yet. We're trying to teach you how to act. You might solidify some bad habits. Let us like go right. through the training program first. There's that. Well, I think that's, pro oh, and they also, this is where I found fault with the program, is that there is one of the best film uh, graduate film programs in the world is mm -hmm. NYU. That's where uh, uh, Spike Lee went to school there. Yeah. You know, the list is endless. They should at least have the grad, they're in the same building, mm -hmm. 721 Broadway. They got the grad film students and you got the grad acting students in the same building. Just have it as part of the curriculum right. that it, it's mandatory that you shoot Two or three student films before right. you before your three you years or something, and then you have connections. Yeah, like, that's yeah. actually. And you also understand what is going on on a set. Even after I graduated from NYU, that's I so had to go to set and be like, learn how to hit what hitting my mark was right. and how to do it. I had no practice doing these right. things. Didn't know how a set was run. There was a lot of people who were in my acting class when I moved to LA. Yeah. That and correct me if I'm wrong, please, because I didn't go to NYU or, or I didn't do any theatric, uh, uh, like theater training. Training, first. right? I uh -huh. went right into TV and film training. Got you. So um, a lot of people struggle booking jobs because they were trained to 
project and, and put on a show and perform. And then when they go in front of a camera, which is just real, a conversation one-on-one, -on -one, right. they're too performing big. and they're much. doing this. And the casting directors are like, that's not what we're looking that's for. That's not what we're looking so, for. A lot of people that I was acting in acting class with that did four, five, six years of, of you know, Juilliard and mm -hmm. crazy training, mm -hmm. they don't work because they yeah. weren't trained correctly and yeah. in a way yeah. for TV and film. No, not in a way. I mean, they weren't trained in um, in a medium specific right. sense. What they're doing probably does book them work in regional theaters right. off Broadway, and they might even get to Broadway, maybe even win a Tony. You know who was the oh, what was that show? The Rock? Not the not. Oh, I'm forgetting his name. He, he he was in jail. Then seven year, years later, he was in. He went to Yale. You're talking and about Charles Dutton. Charles Dutton. Yes. Charles I was Dutton. In a movie with Charles Dutton. Okay. So Charles yeah, Dutton. Yeah, very he was a fucking he, legend. He was in love. He was oh, in love oh, right. me and Conor. He was in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dennis Haysbro. Yo, that shit was crazy. Yeah. Charles he, Dutton. Yeah. He was able the to, Rock, yeah, to do that yeah. fine line. It was called The Rock, right? Yeah. When now when you say yeah. The Rock, it's like ubiquitous, synonymous with you know Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah. Like, Is that the right name? <laughs> um, he was so big on camera, but it worked in the context of the character that he was playing. Right. Um, I think that it's okay. I, I based my training theatrically and didn't decide to start training for on-camera work specifically because all of the people whose careers I admire and in some instances, I'm ashamed to say, covet, all their training was all in the theater. Right. So whether it's Denzel or whoever, Mar Marlon Brando, the guys that I like look up to, you, you do look like Marlon Brando a little bit. Know, you know, he does have a little. I got to do that. He's got a little sweat. You got a little Brando swag. I got to mm. do that little Marlon. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my, my point was that I, their foundation was in theatrical training, training for the theater, but then they learned through working with other famous acting teachers throughout history, like how to you know, how to apply the method to on camera work or or what have you, how to calibrate for the camera, which basically this is acting for the camera right here. Who 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 were your inspirations growing up? Like, uh, well, Brando was one of them. Like one of the reasons why I became an actor was because of his performance in Apocalypse. Now, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then movies that blew my mind. I'm from the original Star Wars generation. I right. love sci-fi, fantasy stuff like that. Um, but the list of actors, man. Don Cheadle and Devil in a Blue Dress. Don right. Cheadle, exactly. Smoked. I'm, if Denzel sees this, I'm sorry, man, but you got smoked in that sh in that movie. <laughs> I mean, Don was yeah. just so bad. That drunk scene, you know what I mean? He right. stands up and his eyes are like red. And I was like, man, I mean, he, without chewing the scenery too. So Don Cheadle, Jeffrey Wright. I mean, dude, I mean, there's just, there's so many greats out there. What about Don you, Mike? Who, who are your inspirations growing up? Man. I always get asked this question. I never have like an answer for it. I, I really just be like, I, I don't know, bro. I I don't watch a lot of shit. So right. it's, it's hard for me to say I have a, a, a specific, you know, inspiration. But obviously, you know, I know the great work of Denzel, you right. know, fucking Samuel L. Jackson, yep, Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio, mm -hmm. Don Cheadle, like you said, mm -hmm. um, Wood Harris, like people like that. Like I love, I love. He, was in my, he wasn't in my class, but we were at school at the same time. Wood mm -hmm. Harris but, was insane. I like Wood Harris. There was a Dude, movie called oh, he's Just so Another tough. Day. That was the first time I ever seen him. Did you like see a... him play Jimi Hendrix? Oh, I not not seen. Nah, oh my see god. That. Oh my gosh. Hey, yeah, I'm it's, it's older, but yeah, yeah. man. Jimi Hendrix is, is an interesting person too. So like, yeah. that'd be fire to see yeah. Wood Harris playing him. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm gonna watch we'll that. Watch that. Well, well, um, he uh he he and Saul Williams. I don't know if you guys know who Saul Williams is, but he is like one of the biggest slam spoken word poets ever. Mm -hmm. Used to just go out and tour the New York City poetry circuit live, doing like open mics and mm -hmm. stuff. And we would all the other students who were there at the same time as then we would go watch them and just they, they would just blow right. people's minds. Right. The two of them together, Wood Harris as well, very good spoken word poet. Mm. Yeah, cool. ma'am. Yeah, it was cool yeah. stuff. Um, so going back on the on the uh, Mecca being bald thing, was there yeah. any other uh, aspects of the character that you talked to Courtney about and was like? Um, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to try this? Or were you kind of like, okay, the bald's head, now the, the head's bald, now let's go into what what, what we're going to do? I will say that I could not feel in the skin of Mecca until I, until they finally shaved my head when the hair was off and I'd never been shaved bald before. Mm -hmm. And I saw, the, the you know, I had the, the kind of like, Suge Knight kind of black dyed beard and everything. I was like, yeah, this is that, this is that, and this is that yeah. motherfucker. You, you were I mean? bolo. Yeah, yeah. You were bolo. I was like, bolo, right? Right, right? I was doing a lot of push ups, eating a lot of, a lot of pizza. <laughs> but then, you know, you put on the gorilla pimp fur coat and you see, then you feel all of a sudden you're like, yeah, this is this dude. Right. Uh, sometimes yeah. it's the, it's different for me. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, it has to come from conversations with Courtney, as you just asked about, and like figuring out you know, how to work your way from the inside out, right. just, you know, finding that point of entry on the inside. Mm -hmm. With Mecca, it was all the look. Yeah. And, then the, and then the inside followed. The fact that Courtney gave us 
I think she I think she does this does this for all the characters on the show, but she definitely did it for me. She gave me a three or four page treatment yeah. before I ever mm -hmm. even arrived in New York, which told me the major signposts that my character was going to hit over the course of the season. Right. And she left out key ones so that I wouldn't play it during. The I love she that. She left out the thing about um, uh, I forget what your the, the global ghost of global yeah, snitching revelation. That I, that it has something to do with your dad's death Insane, and Lobos bro. and that shit, shit like is crazy. Yo, bro. that was when, love, that, when we got that script, bro. I was like, yo, what? Yeah, <laughs> I, hate my mind. Yeah. I was like, yo, what? And then this she was, is the and then she and then she was like, yeah. And as a matter of fact, if you think about. Uh, Kane's first line as soon as he meets him, he says, You smell like a narc. Going back to yeah. episode one, I was like, Facts. Courtney, that's a genius. Right. But, in, but at the same said. time, she's giving you, she's feeding you in terms of like your performance, yeah. like so you could prepare. Other than that, I just took it all off the page. Yeah. Yeah. What, what was what was your first scene? Do you remember? Yeah, the first scene was the first scene was uh in the alley where I come out with a shotgun and break the dude's leg and, right. and kill two of them. That was in um, Soho. That's yeah. actually right yeah. on Bond Street, right yeah. next to the, the gym I go to. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. That was the first scene that I got to shoot that scene and was that lit. was great. Yeah. That scene was yeah, that scene's crazy. Yeah. We didn't have well no yeah we had we had the one scene. What what was your favorite scene that you shot? That was close, but maybe that's just because the because it was that was oh no my favorite scene that I got to shoot was when I was um uh, Lil Guap is up in Mecca's apartment, yeah. mm -hmm. and I uh, and I'm I'm <laughs> and I'm breaking his fingers right. slowly while talking to Kane. Like I do not have time for this shit. Yo. There is a power <laughs> gap in me, and I'm trying to fill in this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And they, were, oh, they use it in the trailer too. <laughs> there is a power vacuum, vacuum that I'm in, trying to that I am trying to yeah. fill. Yeah, uh, I was like the writing in this shit. And they had the whole, it was crazy. So in the, in a situation like that, what they have is a very realistic looking prosthetic limb and with, with fingers that bend back to angles that nothing on the human body should actually yeah, yeah, yeah. bend that far. And then they zoom in on that while you're slowly breaking the fingers. And then they like, you know, capture you, you know, try not to do too much with your face while you spit the lines. Yeah. So yeah, man, that was probably the That's most fun fine. scene to That's shoot. That's a crazy ass scene. Yeah, with the scene with you, man, mm. I was trying so hard to go, but it was I was nervous, man, because you're the star of the show, <laughs> and I, well, and I and, and <laughs> he's I, like, he's like, I had to throw you up against this thing. Do that shit. Man. I know, <laughs> and you kept saying like, no, man. Really, fuck me up. Let's yeah, go. Bro. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, bro. <laughs> I'm like, bro, don't yeah, worry about it. I'm yeah. like, don't worry about it. But the dialogue I thought flowed quite yeah, well. But uh, that that moment of where I had to throw you up against the wall, <laughs> I was like, man, I don't want to hurt her. You know? what, what, what was your most difficult scene that you shot while doing Ghost? The most difficult <clears throat> scene. Because a lot of times people don't realize, like, running scenes, action scenes, like, you're doing that for, like, eight hours sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It gets exhausting. Like, yeah. you're doing that all day long. Insane. It would either be the scenes that they shot in the airplane hangar where, Me by the way, when, when they showed me, like, this is, like, Mecca's airplane hangar, and you see the private jet, and the, I was like, man, this looks like, this looks like Gianni and Michael Rainey's uh, garage. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Clip that, clip that, Daniel. Clip, clip, clip that. that. <laughs> um, That's no. one of my Raya profile. Clip what, that, Daniel. <laughs> what people don't know is that uh, when you're shooting in such a gigantic, wide-open space, the way that they have to do the coverage and stuff, it wasn't that the lines were, um, that the lines were, were difficult, right. but it was that you had to hit certain specific marks so that they could see certain areas of the room at right. certain times. That actually was challenging every time mm -hmm. we had to work there. But I didn't really, I can't honestly say I had a day where I was like, man, it was so hard today because it was so fucking fun. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it's just always fun. It's such a fun show. Furthermore, I've also never been on a show that has a two week window in order to finish a single one hour episode. Mm -hmm. Doesn't exist. I, mm -hmm. when, I, when I heard that, I was like, how did Courtney neg negotiate that? <laughs> yeah. They want you to do it in seven days, eight days. Right. You know, I mean, less if you possibly can. Right. You, so you, I work on a Monday, I'm off till Thursday. I work the following Wednesday and the following Friday. Got plenty of time to memorize your lines, go right. to the gym. I mean, like, it was a dream job. I was like, oh, do you have to blow my brains out of the <laughs> It's so Couldn't funny. you just hang around? It's so funny because there's a couple of characters this season and there's a couple of characters from season before. They're always like, it's such a dream job. Yeah, like, why really, do I got to die? It's a good gig, mm -hmm. man. So did you did you know you were going to die when you, um, and was it in the treatment or did you have that conversation? Or It was uh, it was in, it was in the treatment by inference. At the end of my treatment ended with, like, some description of what Monet does in episode 10 right. and saying that she has to make an impossible choice. And I'm like, of course, she's not going to, you know, she's, of course, Mecca's got to go. Right. Because you signed go. a one-year contract. Right? Yeah, there was that, too. Right. They could have re-upped, though. They could have, if they yeah. changed their mind, they could be offering me another one. Right. You know. Yeah. Also, never really got to work. Yeah, I got to work with Daniel, obviously. I was going to say Daniel Lee Bellamy. Yep, Daniel Bellamy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, he's great too. So, so, and Woody. then um, has he been? Has Daniel been on the show? Yeah, yet? Daniel came on. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I missed yeah. his episode. Yeah. yeah, I missed his episode. Yeah, he, he came. He was like, uh, he was like one of our first like maybe ten guests. Yeah, 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 yeah like the yeah. first ten, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, he's great. So, who, who, when you were working, like, yeah. do you have any like Mary stories on set or any? Because you guys had you guys had intimate scenes. You guys like went like was there anything funny or anything fun that happened? Um, it, I would just say my Mary anecdote is very brief. When I went to Florida and University. That's the year, my freshman year is the year she dropped What's the 411. Right. Okay, so I'm like in my head, I'm arriving to set and I'm singing Love No Limit. And, <laughs> you know, I'm like, all, all, and I mean, I know all the lyrics, to, you know, not just that that particular album, but all this other. They were like, do not talk to her about her music. She wants to be treated as an actor, actor because right. that's what she said. So don't go up to her fanboying out. And so I'm just trying to keep it together and shit. I'm like, Mary Jane, wait, who told you that? Was it? Um, Courtney told me that. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, you know, yeah. she'll, she'll tell you Courtney. everything you need to do and not do before yeah, you right. get there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I texted Courtney and I told her that that Mary was coming on. She gave me like a four listing of what not to do. We were we we're like gonna do trivia. We're gonna do this. Set. She's like, don't do that. Don't <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay. I'm that's, all yeah, that's it. She's like, she also hates being cut being cut off. I think I cut off like twice. I'm sorry, Mary. Oh, she does. <laughs> okay, see, I didn't know that. But she's speaking. She that's why I didn't say one word that whole episode because that's all I do. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We love Mary. But so I was I was I have to say I was star struck at first and then we got into the acting thing and you know she's uh, mary as you guys probably know it during your process of getting to know her she can be a little guarded at first mm -hmm. until she like she warms up to you yeah gets to know um me. and you know i think that happened after about three or four episodes and yeah she definitely was very adamant about what she was not going to do right and anytime she opened her mouth i just got real quiet and went right. sat in my chair until right. they figured that out <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah yeah it's like what yeah. did you do yeah no i mean <laughs> hey look the, um, the most of one of the what i what I mean by that is one of the most powerful and important words that we as actors have is the word no. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. I'm mm -hmm. not going to do that right. or I'm, I'm gonna, I want to do it this way. So I right. was taking notes. I was like, man, right. as soon as I have the juice to be like that, <laughs> boy, <laughs> Mary, Mary, quite contrary. Yeah. I, want, <laughs> I want two coffees in the yeah, morning. Instead of one. No, no green M&Ms. No, she was <laughs> yeah. not like, it was yeah, never. No, it was, she really was, is truly the sweetest human being oh my ever. God. She's so chill on yeah. set. Right. She's chill on When, when we, we were almost done last season and everyone like kind of got together on set, she was bringing a little of her own wine. She's like, boy, okay. we had the yeah. best yeah, nah, time she, the last she's day. She's great. Yeah. She's yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. I love her. I love her. Legend. I'll never yeah. forget when you brought the, the brought the lamb truck to set when we was <laughs> filming behind us in the studio. She's like, oh, so this is how y'all pull it up. All right. She said, don't worry, I'm going to back up the helicopter next week. I, I know. Like, yeah. yeah, she came up. She's like, this is your lamb truck? And I was like, uh, no. And she's like, okay. I'm, like, I'm sorry. She said, she said I'm bringing the helicopter I'm out next bringing week. the heli <laughs> helicopter, yeah. That would have oh, been, uh, fuck. Yeah. So, yeah, so let's get into some fan questions. Fan we'll, questions. We'll, we'll, we'll get, get you on out of here, Daniel. Um, so the first one uh, we got from cat.cav was, what would have been your ideal storyline if you hadn't been killed off? Like, if... If Daniel Sanjana could write season three, what would it be for Mecca? I would have loved to see what we didn't see um, in in uh, in the final episode, which is I would have liked to have seen a, a street war between Lorenzo and Mecca that might end up with um, with uh, with Monet, you know, taking the final shot. Uh, me and uh, we were both we were both you know, a little confused as to why it wasn't going down like that. And they were like, because then the story becomes about you two as men and it takes away her, takes away Monet's agency. So we want her right. to be the one to, f to finally kill you because right. otherwise it's just you guys in a, having a pissing contest. Right. So I would have liked to have seen me not die at the end of the first season for them to spread out more of the drama that they, that they, that they kind of hinted towards right. um, in the scene that we did mm -hmm. uh, over the course of the next season. And um, to have it have it culminate in a big ass street war with me and Lorenzo, that would have been like we thought we were gonna have like a Vin Diesel, uh, <laughs> The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, like knock that drag out fight. Oh man, that would have been, oh, been, <laughs> so cool. been fire. Yeah. I ain't gonna yeah. lie, that would have yeah. been. <laughs> um, so I know this isn't really your call, but in your process, in your mind, yeah. like mm. they said, uh, the future twelve acts has Mecca ever ran into Ghost and Tommy in the past? <sighs> I would say I would like for that to have been true. He was clearly within degrees of separation. Mm -hmm, right. I can't now remember all was, the details. He was riding with Lobos. He was riding with Lobos. Lobos. So I, I, I bet you, I go. He, he's been in the same. He's been in physical proximity with them, but he might not have actually met him. Right. He's mm -hmm. seen them in person mm -hmm. for right. sure, mm -hmm. or been like at. at he's at, been around. Maybe he was at the club. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? Maybe yeah, he was yeah. at uh, Ghost Club at some night, point or right, whatever. Night. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Sleeping he's moving away. Yeah, yeah. So, did, did you, um, as an actor, this is a me question. As it, like, what was your process? Did Did you go? Okay, he knew this person. He knew this person. Did you do? Do you do any of that? A lot of homework before. Me personally, I don't love to get too much into that because it gets too confusing and guarded. And Are you talking that. about like creating backstory? Yeah, a little to backstory, make things more specific right, for, for yourself. For Mecca, I do. I didn't with Mecca, and I and I'm glad that I didn't because of what it turns out. People didn't know at the end. Right. Like I, I, she didn't tell me that right. I that about my history with Lobos or mm -hmm. the connection between that and Ghost Death. So, um, I, I I do think it can help, but I think also you can pull a lot of what. All you need to know is the event of the scene. I hate to. I don't want to encourage lazy acting out there, but if right. you know the event of the scene, right. and you generally know who your character is, and you play the truth of the event of the scene, the scene is you know Johnny does not want to let me drive his Lambo again. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, the blue one. I right. have to be clear because <laughs> there's so yeah, many of them. The blue one. Uh, the, the blue one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and I got. I'm trying to massage a situation where I offer him a favor. That's the event of the scene. You play that honestly. It doesn't matter if you know that your favorite color is. You know what I mean? Or that you guys had a fight last week? Or you know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that if that answers your question, but yeah, no, no. I it, I tend. To, I only do that stuff if I absolutely have to. Yeah. But I think just. Yeah, I, I I think I have and such try a... to make your scene part of better. Right, right. Like if you if you make it about them, then you're all, you're automatically going to be good right. in the scene, and then they'll and then it helps them be better. That is too. a fact. That yeah, is yeah, a fact. Yeah. That's perfect for the next fan question. Underscore Kanesha, um, because we talk about you being a, a like a great scene partner and all that stuff. Oh, thanks. She literally said, "What makes you a good scene partner?" I uh, hopefully that. Um, I've had a conversation with somebody whose work I admire, but who shall remain nameless because I don't know if they would consider this to be flattering. Flattering. Very well known male. African American actor who said that he's he never lets anybody steal a frame from him. He's competing against you. He's right. like because it's like that dog, and he's like breaking it down for me. And I'm like, whoa, shit! I just want to. I just can we you know can we all just create and be friends here? Right. But he's trying to he's he's trying to beat you when he's in a scene with you. And I was like, wow, you know. Um, I because that's not my. I don't know how that would make y'all feel. That's, to that's, get that to get that vibe, but right. I want to feel like what I'm going to give you. What I, I like want collaborative. Myself. Yeah, I like the collaborative. A collaborative type of energy, vibe. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I like like you just said. If you focus on making your scene partner better, you're automatically going to be better because you're giving them shit to work with. Right. And that shit just is going to reflect. So it's like being. Against your scene partner, that doesn't really. Yeah, doesn't it, really I don't yeah. think it, I don't think you you don't really benefit. It's no, just, unless you unless all you're concerned with is standing out in your performance, yeah. whether the show sucks or is good. Right, and that's I think. Right, that's kind of wet. That yeah, it's weird because sometimes I will like if my coverage is first or Michael's coverage is first. Like if I, a lot of times people will get lazy on their own coverage. Yeah, and, which I don't like because um, it's just people don't give a fuck and they're like, we, I don't kind of care how your thing is. But the way me and Mike work is like, sometimes I'll even go harder for Mike's coverage. Yo, sometimes, yo, dead ass, I'd be like, why the fuck did I do this on my coverage? Right. I'd be like, damn, bro. Right. I said, yeah. damn, that was a good take. I should have did this on the other right. side. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you find stuff. I've been stuff. there too. Yeah. I've been like, there too. This works. Right. And you're like, nah, no way I didn't do this on my coverage. <laughs> right. Yo, you we can't turn back. back around real quick. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yo, GM, yo, Rob, what we doing? <laughs> yeah. There is also a thing about measuring your stamina because it's a long yes, day, right? Yes, because sometimes you can get burned and let's out. Say, like, yeah, and so let's say in one of these examples with you and Gianni, you, you're, it was your coverage first, mm -hmm. but you were trying to... You, well, actually, his coverage first. Yeah, right. Well, I'm just saying. Which no, you're right. Might, yeah, no, you're right. You, might, right. you might be holding back something that mm -hmm. you know that you don't give at the right time right. because you're just trying to modulate mm -hmm. your shit. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that is that is a fact. Sometimes you got to keep something in the pocket for for, for when it's your turn. A couple right. in the tank. Be, yeah. yeah, you got to keep some the reserve tank. For yeah, or, yeah. Or or yeah. surprise him. Like sometimes me and Mike like surprising each other. Yeah. Like something that we didn't do. Like if it's Mike's coverage, mm. I won't do something um, uh, until it's his coverage, so I can yeah. you know I could surprise. Get a reaction. And then I'll be like, what the fuck? Yo, it, it, that shit works perfectly because, every time. Yeah, because like, it makes it feel fresher. You yeah. find gold in those moments, right. like reactions that you wouldn't have gotten. Yeah, because I mean? yeah. real, genuine, real reaction is not react. It's not Tariq's reaction. It's Michael's reaction. It's Michael's reaction. Sometimes, yo, moment. sometimes you be catching me so off guard. I'd be, like, <laughs> I'd be break. <laughs> like I literally would just break from the scene. I'd be like, yo, bro, <laughs> like chill, like it'd be, it'd be, it'd be. Cool. I would imagine <laughs> if there's anybody that can make me break character regularly on set, it would be you. What? <laughs> well, I I mean, jokes sometimes I try to. Sometimes <laughs> if we get some in the can, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna yeah. make laugh so hard. <laughs> but th that actually was like early on, and I forget what. I think it was the episode that 50 directed. Mm. Um, there is a scene where um, Effie comes in and uh, 
I, I'm like throwing the money or something happens, and he did like a genuine like dying laughing, mm -hmm. and they used yeah, that they use it, yeah. for the take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember a lot of the feedback on Twitter and Instagram was like, "Wow, that was like a genuine laugh yeah, from right. Tariq." Yeah, that was so a, that was a, that that's kind of where that like friendship and that vibe kept you know pulling yeah, off of yeah. from from those scenes that we were genuinely making each other laugh. Yeah, you know? yeah. Now, was this early in the canon? Was this when was this? Was this, this season was, this one was, or is this season no, 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 two? No, no, no. This was this, this was, was power. This was power. Oh, this was power. Oh, yeah, season yeah. five. This is power. Yeah, season, and season I bet five. You, power, I bet yeah. you that synergy that they that they saw yep. in moments like that, maybe not even just that moment, is right. one of the reasons why they got you guys doing so much together. First, that was your first. You guys worked. That was your first and only episode for that season. Yeah, season five. I was in five oh six. Okay, and then I did four in in six. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's when Brayden and Tariq really started like working together, and mm -hmm. it was so funny because you see Brayden come in in like Abercrombie in season five, <laughs> and then legitimately he he hangs out with Tariq one time. He comes in with the off white. He yeah. comes in with the Valentino. Yeah, he's like, what that we that is good. You guys also. Uh, this is kind of out of the swag factor on the show yeah. with the drip yeah. is just unfair. Just, <laughs> it's it's just everybody is wearing. The, every jacket you saw me wear was twelve to fifteen thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah. Every the yeah. blue Berluti, that that the shit. Did you take anything or no? I, no, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I guess I didn't even ask. I would have had to probably purchase it. But no, they didn't give me anything. Yeah, yeah. making shit was crazy. Man, Man um, Kane's crazy. drip is insane. Yeah, Kane's, yeah. Yo, I'll never forget. They, they, he's they, always got the black on black LV. Right. Yes. Or, or even if it's yes. whatever, Gucci right. or Dolce it's Gabbana. Like, black you can on black. Only if you look and you see the pattern, you're like, oh, that's some nice shit. Yeah. 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 This season, Kane's got a lot of crazy stuff. I think I wear Amiri in every episode. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah? Right. I, I didn't wear a lot of Amiri season two, but what did mm -hmm. you wear mostly in season three? Season three, I wore... Uh, I wore a lot of Amiri. I wore a lot of like, uh, what else did I wear? A lot of Amiri, a lot of like. Um, Tom Brown. Yeah, Tom Brown. Yeah. No, no, Tom Brown was really second season. I didn't wear much Tom Brown this season, I, don't, I feel like. I wore like, like um, Javanchi, right. Fendi. Um, yeah, it's cool. That cool. What they cool, give, what they do for evolve. him, they give you the sickest color combinations. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah, I understand yeah. now. When you guys are watching the show, and there's, I mean, a reason other than the charisma mm -hmm. and the, the beautiful, you know, the complexion and all that, <laughs> the good looks and everything, uh, it's like it's they they they'll make you pop out with the way. Yeah, the I remember colors, one time you had this one outfit on, brother. It was like uh, the jeans. I think were half black, half white. And oh, I, yeah. yeah. Those Rick Owens jeans. Yeah, was so I know, sick. Yeah, I was like, about, damn. Yeah. I know exactly what I've been And I'm like, about. I'm too old to try to rock that shit. I'm going to look pathetic. Like, it's just, I just, it just doesn't work for everybody. Yeah, I know my lane. I know my lane. It's dope because, because, it's dope because really? Frank evolves with, like, What's Bro, what's is, hot right now? So Frank. Like off white, like you know, it's it's still popping. But season six of Power, that shit was popping. He so is that's in, all he's, Frank is in my phone as Frank Drip Master Fleming. <laughs> <laughs> Frank exactly. Drip Master Fleming. Exactly. He thought I was joking. I screenshot him. Been putting me on Drip since I was twelve. Dude, man. man. Frank, Frank oh, so he guy. was back. He was on power. Yeah, well, I he, forgot. Yo, about Frank that. created the whole look of this show. Bro. Oh like, man, okay. he created that whole all the fact. Like he created that shit from the ground up. And, then, and from season one to man. season six, you could just see how how much they trusted him and just kept on giving him more money for the budget. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. season one, they were wearing fucking the Levi's. Is, yeah, <laughs> nah, yeah. I was wearing like. I mean, it was still swagged out. Like I remember being like when I was a recording role. I was I was still a little swagged out. I would have like good denim, right. good on um, PPR. Uh, PRPS denim, good Jordans. Like that was when PRPS was lit back in the day. What else was lit? I mean, not PRPS. Um, naked. No, naked. Was it naked jeans? I was it naked jeans. I think it was. I think it was naked jeans. Those those was the denim back in the day. I used to have like Tariq had like twelve pairs of them. All <laughs> fire out of jeans. Yeah. Every fucking pair of Jordans, fours, threes, twos, you name. It. Like Man. He, was, he was always like. It was swagged out since the since the beginning of the show. Frank, uh, Frank had us dripped out from the beginning. Yeah. You know what though, and I bet you that the wardrobe budget for this show, for your show, is bigger. Not for... naked, nudie jeans. My bad. Nudie <laughs> jeans. Yes. Oh yes. yeah. <laughs> nudie <laughs> jeans. Yeah. Yes. N U D I E. Yes. Something yes. Like that. Yeah. yeah. N U D I E. Um, that the budget that you guys have for Ghost, I think part of that is also because of the version. Within the Power Universe, Ghost is a very Ghost Power Book Two Ghost is a very specific show. Right, mm. it's sexy, it is hood, but right. it's also glossy, Elegant. Elegant. it's flossy. Right. Now you you compare that to uh, BMF, right. they look like they're literally shooting in the fucking mm -hmm. hood. Right. Yeah, like yeah, I mean, yeah, and yeah, there's exactly. no, it's not glossy, it's not flossy, but it's its own kind of vibe. Right, mm -hmm. and I bet you that their wardrobe budget is probably doesn't need to be as big. Right, mm -hmm. because in order to create that, this is a big rich town illusion. Mm -hmm. 
It has to look like a big rich town. Yeah, that's like, it can't be. <laughs> and then like, but then again, you gotta you gotta think about them getting all those old pieces too. Like they got they wear a lot of old pieces that are probably uh, rare as fuck. You're talking about like like, BMF, right, yeah, dude? Yeah, because it was Canaan, it was yeah. it was y'all shit back mm-hmm. then. Yeah, because it's in the nineties. Mm-hmm. Yes, so I didn't know what shit, what BMF Damn. show you were talking about. I was like, I yeah, never I, heard I, that yeah, I didn't really. Oh yeah, it clicked to me after. Yeah, we don't. We don't say that. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm dehydrated. I don't even know what I was talking about. When you were on rescue, me, you literally wore firefighter clothes like every day. All the time, all the it time. It was hot as fuck, like, like, dude, <laughs> dude. So we and we would be like, we'd be like, acting's hard. I, I just don't know what I'm gonna do. Like, we're getting, making money and everything. We're chilling right. out there in our director's seats and all that kind of stuff, and we're complaining about the fact that we're wearing bunker bunker gear. Right. Mm. It's like, yeah. And the all real right. firefighters that were on set that played our background were like, look at us, like, pussy. Ass. <laughs> <laughs> real firefighters, they did extra work to. To, while they were, they were all real FDNY, oh, most dope. of whom who, most of whom had been there on the day of 9-11. Mm. And so we wanted there, I think Dennis did that on purpose. He would he knew that the actors were gonna want the respect of these guys. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or so they would have to at least for them exactly to think that we were like, cool. Like, right. Yeah, they would have to they probably would have respected us more if we hadn't been complaining about how hot it was. <laughs> was, was Dennis <laughs> calling you guys pussies and stuff like that or not? All the time. Yeah. Yeah. All, yeah. The time. Yeah. all the time. <laughs> He's like, hey, Dan, these guys run into burning buildings in 103 degree heat. Yeah. You're mad because you're sitting out drinking a Diet Coke. You know what I mean? I'm like, you're right. It was so funny because when Naturi came on, I said the same thing. I was like, yeah, yesterday was so hot. We were sitting there in like Montclair's. I was like, fuck this. Oh, and she looked at me and was like, <laughs> I was like, I am getting a little too fucking, you know. It's a little too. Yeah. You know. I love you, bro. Hey. Thank you so much for coming. We're gonna have me? you on again. Yeah. And I think if um I'm gonna know, be vlogging with y'all. I'm, I'm gonna come oh, yeah. on your vlog. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, we, we, have a, we have a plan. I can't speak on it now. I'll let you guys, yes. but yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. All that. Hell yeah. Um um also uh, you know, Mike is going out of town for like a week. I'm gonna go out of town for a week, so we'd love to have you come in and guest host. Something oh, cool. That'd like be that. awesome. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. Just, be just yeah. some, some fun stuff to do. Cool. So plug whatever you have out right now. It's all it, all it is is Echoes right now. We're number one on Netflix. You know, come go check it out. Uh, that's, it's it's a limited series, so it's not a movie. You got to scroll down just a little bit. It's also featured, so Hell we yeah. love the support. Number one on Netflix. Is number one. On He's gonna have an Instagram soon. I'm I'm gonna force him to do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Courtney, number one on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Shout yeah, you, out Courtney, little... <laughs> motherfucking Kent. Yeah, come on. Shout right. out the Queen, man. Yeah. yeah. Courtney Kent. Courtney Mike. Kent. But, um. Yeah. Um. This. We'll, yeah, Tycoon will be done by the Yeah, time. Tycoon. Tycoon was lit. Tycoon was lit, man. Oh, man. I, um, <laughs> Say something about Tycoon. <laughs> tycoon Weekend. Tycoon Weekend. Oh, it's it's oh, a 50s, oh, oh. 50s um, okay. festival thing where okay. we literally have a flight tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Oh. 50 did us dirty with that 5 a.m. flight. Yeah, nah, but oh. we out, though. We're going to be They there. have a 5 a.m. flight to Tycoon. Yeah. <laughs> 50 we can't f- even. We're f- hating from outside the club because we can't even get in. <laughs> and you're over here talking about your 5 a.m. flight Where's to Tycoon. Where's the PJ, Fifth? Yo, five, yo five, we need the PJ next time, man. What's up? Like, what Oh man! But um, where's how long 20? are you gone? Um, oh, just a week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably not even a week. Probably yeah, like three, like, four days. Like, yeah, it's like, like three four days. or five days. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I right now, by the time you guys are watching this, we have just gotten back from Tycoon Weekend. Bro, I'm so I am tired, going directly bro. to the hospital to get fully checked. Um, <laughs> and then we're back here, baby. So you know. <laughs> Yeah. Get a little IV drip or something. <laughs> Maybe yeah. some antibiotics. <laughs> yeah. So my uh-huh. depends on <laughs> depends on what he's getting checked for. <laughs> 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 right. Where is twenty two on Instagram on, on TikTok? Um, Michael Rainey Jr. on Instagram as well. I go follow me. And yeah, we here. Who has it? G. Yes, sir. Um, uh, watch Raising Canaan. It's out right now. The episodes oh, yeah, are sure, airing. Yeah, go watch um, the boys. We want to do more Chuck interactive the Raising Canaan stuff. If they let us, we'd love to. But um, <laughs> Come on, uh, work follow. With us. Work with us. Yeah, work with us. His, His voice us. totally changed. M- Mackay's yeah. subtle. He now he yo, sounds just, just like, like fifty. Yo, bro. I was like, literally in the kitchen. That was I was so in the, smooth, bro. I was in the kitchen, my nigga. I didn't even know you was watching Raising Canaan. Like I walked, I walked in from the from the backyard, and I'm like. The fuck is he watching? It sounded just like 50. I thought you was watching like a 50 like movie or interview or some shit. I'm like, and I go into the living room. I'm like, yo, this is really good. The little slur yo, and the way yeah. he does the mouth and stuff. It's subtle, but it's like, it's and it's man, different. Yo, Makai, I ain't gonna season. lie, bro. You evolved like a month. <laughs> oh, that is God. crazy, bro. Props. Shout out to you, Brody. Hell yeah. yeah. Watch Raising Canaan. Watch Raising Canaan. Season two. Is it season two? Yeah, season, season two out yep. right now. I thought it was season three, but season two out right now. Make sure you go watch that. Yes, Boys sir. Johnny V. Pale, everything, TikTok, all that. Get into a million. The fuck? We love you guys. Thank you so much michael give us one baby the crew has it baby yes sir the crew has it and you have it thank you danny we appreciate thank you guys appreciate it. you yes, sir yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro. I told, that's why I, I tried to show you. To I tried, bro. I tried to show you, but I said he pulled up drippy. I'm trying to show you. I love you, bro. Thank you, you so much for coming.